Frank, uh, you you were uh, married to a Patterson, and I can remember when the Pattersons come to the Okanagan, because they landed in Penticton with 150 head of horses. That's correct, Rod, yes. And they just put them in a little corral. They had them down by the old the old stalls down there, because I rode in the, yeah, rode in the yeah. racetrack there. But uh, now, uh, tell us a little bit about the Patterson family. Well, I married the oldest Patterson girl, Hazel Patterson, and her folks left East Cooley, that's around way in Alberta. I think that would have been about 1934. Uh, Hazel said that they started out with around 120 head of horses. Now these horses were not gentle horses, they were range horses. Very few were broken. They did have a few that were broken that pulled the wagon, and they had an old chef truck that bailed up with Mr. Patterson, that's Sam, Samuel Martin Patterson. Uh, he uh, put a, a, a pole on this uh, 28 chef truck and pulled it with a team of horses. And they came right over, over the Monashi. They had to cross a ferry which was quite a difficult deal with, especially with the uh, unbroken horses. But they made it. All that. But they were headed for way up uh, east of uh, Burns Lake. Yeah, no, way north of uh, Burns Lake country. Yeah, east of Prince George. However, they only made it as far as the seven of Wallachian, and they wintered in Wallachian. And uh, the first time I ran into any of the Pattersons, I was in Oliver one day, and Bill Patterson, that was Hazel's father, he asked me if I knew his brother Roy. He had moved to Osiris with this woman, Isabel, and their daughter. I told him, yes, uh, Roy, there is a gentleman down there with a 40 or 50 head of horses. He's camped in the sagebrush, Greasewood and sagebrush, east of Osorio's. So uh, I got them a ride down there with, uh, no, I can't remember the gentleman, Wilkins, I think it was. Chet Wilkins was driving a lumber truck and I got them a ride to Osorio's. And then later, Bill moved down to Osiris. And he started a little meat market down there, which eventually I traded seven head of horses to him for the meat market. And we moved it from the old town site, uh, Dawson and Plaskett skidded the house and the buildings over to the new town site. Now that is where the Osiris Credit Union is. I bought that lot in the fall of 1936 from the provincial government for $37.50 down two more payments, which amounted just over 100 bucks. Now today, I don't know, I'd imagine it would be close to a million dollars. The way real estate is, no source, a million dollars don't buy much. I want to ask you a little question. One day you come in to me and you wanted me to haul a horse for you from the falls, from the stockyards, a small little mare, and you wanted me to haul her. So I says, well, sure, I'll haul her for you, Frank. Where do you want to take her? He says, up to Richter Pass. And this was in January. Correct. And I said, well, I'll haul her. So anyway, we went up to the falls. We went the back road and we had a more or less a sachet around and uh, you enjoyed the trip and we stopped at O.K. Falls, picked up the little mare, come back, we took the back road here and you said this is just a scenic drive we're having today. And I said, well, yeah, we're having a scenic drive. So anyway, up down to, up to Richter Pass we went, drove in that old piece of land up there that you rented 
And I said, what are you going to do with this little mare? And you said, I just, I'm going to turn her out here. And I said, what do you mean you're going to turn, turn her out here? I said, all by herself. And she, you said, oh, she'll be all right here. So anyway, we unloaded her. And you said to me, give me a boost up on her. And I said, no, Frank, you give me a boost up on her. I'll ride her. So anyway, I started her up the road. You were, going, you were following me, and we started up the road to open a, a slip wire fence, the gate, and we were going to turn her out. And I started riding her, and I said to myself, this is a pretty good little horse. I said, Frank's not going to turn her out here, I'll tell you that right now. So I turned around, and I started back down the road towards the truck. And you said, where are you going? And I said, you're not turning this little mare out. I said, I'm taking her home. Okay, he says, that'll be fine. So. We, we loaded her again. <laughs> That's Start. correct. That part is correct, bud. Start. Yeah, you kind of took pity on the mare. I had other horses in that pasture. And uh, it was what I called a mighty place. I leased it from Mighty Simon. And uh, it was only good for the winter time because in the summer, about June, July, the spring would dry up. So I used to use it as a when the pasture horses. If the snow come, got too much snow, I would take a little hay up and throw them. I remember the horse quite well. It was a very gentle horse. It was a horse, I believe, had been broken for a buggy or a ride or do whatever. General purpose horse. You had it quite a while. I remember you used to ride it once in a while. But I can't remember exactly what you did with it, but I know you sold it. Well, I'll tell you a little story about that, that when we come down off the hill that day, we stopped at the A&W, and you bought me lunch, and it cost about ten bucks. And anyway, when we got back to my place and we unloaded the little mare, you says, well, you can have her for what I paid for her, which I did. I give you a check for her. Yeah, And I says, correct. I'm not going to charge you anything for hauling. He says, that's a good, you Frank says, that's a good deal. He says, if I had to take it a taxi, he says, it would have cost me $40. <laughs> that's correct. And, and anyway, I had thought the mayor would have a real good home. Bud was a great feeder, no matter if it was cattle, horses, whatever it was. They were always fed good. You never saw a sin animal on Bud the Hoover's property. He always he had very good hay. He put up good alfalfa hay, and he fed his cat. Well, he fed the cattle two or three times a day, horses the same. I showed him another little mare one time, Francis, he called it. Uh, when he got it, she was full of wood ticks. He'd been running over on Georgia Thompson's property in that greasewood. She got all them wood ticks. And I guess it must have took about a week or maybe ten days or so picking on wood ticks off. She was plenty wild when he got her. But after a while she gentled right down. And I believe he had Long, was it? Jimmy Long. Jimmy Long to kind of ride her a little bit and then he ended up riding her himself. Uh, he fed her so good he could hardly keep the saddle on. <laughs> she was so fat. That's true. Uh, I believe he, I think he sold it to Mark Quantlebeck. I don't really know what happened to her. She was an all-purpose, uh, she was a, I bought two of them horses from Archie Jack, actually, from the North Country. Yeah. Anyway, I kept the little mare and I give her to her, my granddaughter, but finally my granddaughter outgrew her. She didn't ride anymore, and it was too small for me. There was a lady come in here one day and said, I'd like to buy that little mare. And I, this seemed to be a strange thing. Anyway, we sold it to this lady, and she took it to Alberta. And I thought, hauling horses from here to Alberta seems to be a little bit strange to me, but that's where that little mare went. Well, yeah, it just sounded stranger, because mostly horses come from Alberta, a lot of horses. They raise more horses in Alberta than we do here in BC. In fact, there are a lot of quarter horse ranches and people go make a living. And it's the Brian selling raising horses in Alberta.